Would it be possible in today's day and time that a government would incarcerate a million people, blood test them, get their tissue samples, put that in a database, and then sell their organs around the world? Would it be possible that professional doctors would commit such atrocity to extract organs from a live body? Because it's such a huge and unbelievable crime, it's impossible to accept it at the first sight. Please rise. China Tribunal, final sitting. Sir Jeffrey Nice, QC, and Chair. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is the judgment of the Tribunal. For over a decade, the People's Republic of China has stood publicly accused of acts of cruelty and wickedness that match the cruelty and wickedness of medieval torturers and executioners. The China Tribunal is being led by Sir Geoffrey Nees, QC, world leading expert on genocide crimes against humanity. He agreed to establish a, an independent tribunal with a number of other distinguished colleagues and to shine a light on a very dark place. It should be made clear that it gives the tribunal no pleasure to reach this conclusion to which it is driven by evidence and the application of reason and logic, together with its appraisal of witnesses who gave evidence. Over 50 witnesses testified. Uh, Ms. Yang, is this your statement? Yang Nui, is this your statement? Yes. Are you going to give your evidence in English or in Chinese? I'm in Chinese. I Chinese. ask you to remember that it is very important to tell the truth. The whole truth and nothing but truth. Uh, Thank you. 28 were fact witnesses, and the rest were experts and investigators. The reading materials that was given to the tribunal went into thousands of pages. If you look at page 133... This is the first tribunal where there's been a documentation process for the actions of the Chinese state. There is no international court that could look into the evidence, could identify those responsible, that People's Tribunal is filling this gap. People's Tribunal are set up to investigate, in particular, the massive crimes that committed by states or state organs, which are not, for one reason or another, handled by either the United Nations or other international bodies who could have handled. The conclusion shows that very many people have died indescribably hideous deaths for no reason, that more may suffer in similar ways, and that all of us live on a planet where extreme wickedness may be found in the power of those for the time being, running a country with one of the oldest civilizations known to modern man, which ideally we should be able to respect, and from which we should be able to learn. It's very sad that those who constantly supported China and justified its actions did, did nothing. Transplantation Society and other groups also tried to ignore the, the matter, what the tribunal has now termed as willful blindness. The PRC has done little to challenge the accusations except to say that they were politically motivated lies. And? Governments around the world and international organizations, all required to protect the rights of mankind, have expressed doubt as to the accusation, thereby justifying their doing nothing to save those who were in due course, it is said, to be killed to order. So many people are unnecessarily uh, afraid of China and uh, kowtow to China. Uh, and so few people are prepared to speak up uh, boldly. You look at the UN, they target certain countries. China seems to always get off. The Chinese government were given the opportunity at every stage to appear as witnesses, and they failed to produce evidence or witnesses. China has taken much more aggressive, assertive actions to prevent any information being known about, and, and that's, that's an escalating trend. What this tribunal did uh, is, is said not only is this happening beyond a doubt? Well, certainly they also said this is a crime against humanity. Victim for victim, 
and death for death, the gassing of the Jews by the Nazis, the massacre of the Khmer Rouge or the butchery to death of the Rwanda Tutsis may not be worse than cutting out the hearts, other organs, and the very souls of living, blameless, harmless, peaceable people. Now, this tribunal has concluded that certain that Falun Gong is a source, probably the principal source of organs for forced organ harvesting. The report adds that whilst it doesn't have sufficient evidence to reach the same conclusion for the Muslim Uyghur community, it says the vulnerability of the Uyghurs to being used as a bank of organs is also obvious. It's being called transplant tourism. That's where people are now flocking to China to get needed organs. Would you say that the majorities of these operations do result in the deaths of people? They all result in the death of people. Like, for example, we all know about somebody going and buying a kidney in a back street somewhere in a poor country. The fact is, in China, they take both or kidneys and other organs as well. So it's nobody survives these uh, these organ uh, transplants because they, as I say, they they're dead after their organs. All of their organs are removed. Doctors killed those innocent people simply because they pursued truthfulness, compassion, and forbearance in the case of Falun Gong practitioners and lived lives of healthy exercise and meditation that was seen as dangerous to the interests and objectives of the totalitarian state of the People's Republic of China. This is a very uncomfortable truth, inconvenient truth. China needs to stop what they're doing. Where else in the world can you go and get an organ within two weeks? I hope today no one can turn around to pretend that they don't know this is happening. It's important that we never lose sight of the human side of this story. I hope this judgment will awaken some uh, consciousness from uh, Chinese surgeons. There's lots of important decisions that we need to make as a, as a transplant community as to how we take this judgment forward. The tribunal concluded with this very powerful statement about uh, any government, any entity, any individual dealing with the Chinese Communist Party state is in effect dealing with a, a criminal state. They actually single out China as a criminal state. And I think nothing will be the same after this. Any who interact in any substantial way with the PRC, including doctors and medical institutions, industry and businesses, most specifically airlines, travel companies, financial services businesses, law firms, pharmaceutical insurance companies, together with individual tourists, educational establishments, and art establishments, should now recognize that they are, to the extent revealed in this judgment, interacting with a criminal state. We will rise.